Hello, my name is Tuttle Penry. I'm a solitary pagan witch. I'm an author and the founder of the Wolf and Howl Press. And today's little talk is about the Summerlands, or more specifically, what happens to us when we die. And the simple answer is, we don't know. Uh, we do know um, what happens to our bodies, but what happens to us? What makes us us? And the truth of the matter is that in spite of all the teachings of different places and different leaders, we don't really know. Now, when I was a child, people would talk a great deal about, uh, or certainly the ones I knew, would talk a great deal about what happened when you died, but not at all about how babies arrived, how they were made. So there was a, a terrible um, disconnect, if you like, between the matter of birth, the cause of birth and the cause of death and what happened to you when you, when you passed. And uh, I can well remember uh, a teacher of mine when I was about seven, she took us all on a walk to a nearby cathedral, something to do with the class on a cold autumn day. And she spent a lot of time wandering around the graveyard telling us in gory detail uh, what happened, how bodies decomposed. And I had nightmares about it for years afterwards. Um, the reason I, I'm telling you this little tale is because we need to make a, a complete um, distinction, if you like, between what is us, what is the self, why am I talking to you now? I'm talking to you now because I'm alive. If I was dead, I couldn't. And what happens to us when we die? Now, we don't know, and lots of people have lots of different viewpoints, and I do respect that. You know, there are people who believe in heaven and hell, and that's it. There are people who say, I'm in a clue, not interested. Okay? There are people who say, nothing happens, you die, that's it. Okay? Uh, personally, I believe that we go to the Summerlands, which is like a halfway house if you like and uh, there we rest and we prepare for our next incarnation because I believe like a lot of pagans believe not all but a lot I believe in reincarnation uh, I tend to think each life is a learning process now for me perhaps in this life I've had uh, pretty much a share of uh, ill health and um, living with people who've had very ill health as well. And perhaps that was what I needed to learn this time round. Perhaps this is what I chose to learn this time round. Uh, it's not a hardship, it's just the way it is. It's what the Anglo-Saxons used to call weird. W-Y-R-D. And it basically meant it is what it is. Um, I think you see that if we do reincarnate, then as I am now, I've been around before, in other words, it's not my first incarnation, that would be very unlikely, and it's not my last either. So, whatever there is within me, if you like, that is common to the past and will be common to the future, is in me now. So I do feel that to some extent, I must know the answer, I must know what happens, because there is part of me that has been round before, and there is a part of me that will come back round afterwards. Talking about coming back round afterwards. Hello, Noah. Oh, he's off. Doesn't seem so interested in filming these days. Um, so, uh, I think we are, really, we're asking the wrong question. We, we know deep down. We may not admit it to ourselves. We may not able, be able to find the answer, like we can't always find our keys or something. Uh, it might be lost under a pile of rubbish somewhere inside our heads. But I think the answer is there. Um, does it matter what we were before? Now, this is something where a lot of people uh, do spend an inordinate amount of time trying to prove they were Cleopatra or... Elizabeth I or somebody famous, important, in a previous life. And I think the reason they do this is because they feel if they were more important in a previous life, then they are somehow more important in this one. And I don't think it works like that either. The truth is, I don't know how it works exactly. I have a few ideas uh, which I'm sharing here now, but they're by no means the full story and I wouldn't claim that they are. Um, 
the Anglo-Saxons um, and heathens across Northern Europe generally, not all, uh, they tended to believe that the body could have multiple souls and that the soul could leave the body even during sleep. And um, during some of the writings of the early church fathers, Christians in other words, um, sleep was used as a metaphor uh, for death sometimes, or for ignorance even. So when we talk about sleep and death and one thing and the other, we're not always sure what it is people are talking about. But certainly heathens believed that the body could have several souls and that after death they could leave and uh, go into a tree, go into a bird, something like that. Uh, which is rather like um, that famous scene in The Wicker Man where the uh, policeman Howie is, is uh, asking questions of the school teacher. Miss Rose, and uh, she's saying about we believe that the soul can go into a tree or a bird. And it was very much a belief at that time, in the very early period in Northern Europe, that was the sort of thing that happened. Now, of course, changes in burial practice are, uh, they're very significant because they change how we view. Uh, if you believe that the soul goes on after death, well, um, what do you do with the body? How do, how do you separate the soul from the body? It can leave during sleep, which suggests that uh, dreams are perhaps another form of an afterlife. That perhaps just as we dream and we go off, so this happens in an afterlife. It's a difficult subject because I'm really telling you my views and I, I acknowledge that uh, these may not be everybody's. Um, but um, there is a, a, a wonderful passage of... Um, some Arabian writer, Ibn Fadlan, who's writing about the 10th century, and he witnessed a, um, a cremation of a tribal chief in southern Sweden, I think it was, and uh, they said to him, you know, you lock your, you lock your body and your souls up in the, in the grave, whereas we set them free. At the moment of cremation, the smoke goes to the sky and the, the soul is free. So that's an interesting one, that they believed it was cremation not death that set the soul free. And um, we do find it in the Anglo-Saxon rune poem as well, where you get the final rune, Ea, where uh, clearly the body is sentient in the grave. And again, that's a tricky one because the, um, the early church was um, encouraging burial. Heathens did bury their dead, but they often cremated them as well. But they encouraged burial. And of course, uh, the rune poem portrays it as rather an unpleasant thing that the body is in the in the grave feeling betrayed so these are all things we have to think about you know what we do how we think uh, how we treat people when they are dying how we treat them when they have died and what happens to us afterwards there is a point at which we are no more the person we once were now what happens to us then well, as I say, I believe you, you go on almost in a dream, if you like, and you go off to some other place, wake up, and then you get ready for your next time round. So in a way, you wake up, get ready, and go back again. Almost like a debriefing session. But uh, they're just my views. I hope you find them interesting. I'm not trying to convert anybody to what I think. And uh, I do hope you're enjoying your path. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.